In this video, we're going to review Chapter 4, Newton's Laws. Uh, we'll begin by just restating Newton's Laws um, and also defining what inertia is. Inertia refers to the tendency of an object to resist any change in its state of motion. And it's usually measured in uh, units called kilograms and also referred to as the object's mass. Newton's first law basically states that an object continues in a state of rest or in a state of motion at constant speed along a straight line unless compelled to change that state by a net force. Now, if there is a net force, Newton's second law states that the object will therefore accelerate. And the amount of acceleration is directly proportional to the mass and inversely proportional uh, to the uh, directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. It's given by this formula here, sum of the forces equals ma. And, I, and the third law is to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So in Newton's laws, uh, the way a force is defined is that uh, uh, one Newton is that amount of force which, when applied to a one kilogram mass, will accelerate it at an acceleration of one meter per second squared. So a Newton basically is a kilogram meter per second squared. And the net force here means that there's a number of forces, we have to add them up, usually just add them up as vectors and find the net force. In the simplest case, as shown here, the net force is found very uh, easily by just subtracting uh, 100 from 110 and the net force in this case is a force to the right of 10 newtons. But if they're not along the same direction, then uh, th that situation is a little harder and you must work with vectors. Uh, let's see how to apply Newton's law to a simple situation. In this case, we're going to look at uh, the problem number 7 here. A net force acts on a mass and produces an acceleration of A. What acceleration results in the net force 2F acts on a mass of 2M? In other words, this acceleration will be what compared to the previous one? Well, in the first case, the acceleration is equal to just F divided by M. Now, if we change the force and we change the mass, we get a different acceleration. Let's call it A prime. And let's see, this one will be a net force of twice as much. If this was F, this will now be 2F. Acts on a force four times as massive, so this will be 4M. And so one of the things you can see is that this new acceleration will be one half F over M. And of course we know that F over M it's just the previous acceleration, the original acceleration here. So this will be one half of the of the old acceleration. Let's take a look at this problem with uh, Badwaldinio and Capucci, who are accelerating a wagon at. Uh, 4 meters per second squared. Each person is pulling with the same force in the same direction. If Waldinio falls down, but not down, but it falls actually into the wagon, effectively doub doubling its mass, and Capri Capriccio continues to pull in the same way, the acceleration of the wagon now will be. So what happens by falling down, first of all, what has changed? Let's take a look at the new acceleration, also called A prime. Now, the old acceleration was F divided by M, and that was equal to 4. So let's put that down. F divided by M is equal to 4. Now, this new acceleration, A prime, uh, if he falls down, he can't be pulling anymore or pushing, so the force now will be half of what it was. It'll be, if it was F before, it'll now be one-half F. 
And if he falls into the wagon, it will, the mass of the wagon was m, the mass of the wagon now will be 2m. And therefore this new acceleration we can see is one-fourth f over m. But don't forget, f over m was just 4, and so this will be one-fourth of 4. which is one meter per second squared. Here's another problem. A hundred newton force pulls a 25 kilogram box at a constant speed along a horizontal table. What is the value of the coefficient of friction between the table and the box? Stop the video for a minute and see if you can figure this out by yourself. So, let's see if we can solve the problem here. There is friction and it's moving at constant speed. So there is a force this way, which we call the frictional force, opposing the motion. Usual symbol for the frictional force is little f. The applied force is here on the right and that's big F. Now since it's moving at constant speed what we know is that big F is, has to equal little f, the frictional force, and both of those are 100 newtons. We also know that in this case the normal force, if we draw all the forces diagram, all the force diagrams, we have the normal force up and we have the weight down. And since there's no motion in the y direction, we know that some of the forces have to add up to zero or that the normal force is equal to the weight, which we know is equal to mg. We also learned that the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So in this case, we know the frictional force. We found it. It's 100. And we're looking for the coefficient of friction, mu. And we know the normal force is equal to the weight over here. And that is equal to mg, 25. Let's use 10 for g for the time being. So that will be 250. So this is equal to 100 is equal to mu times 250 times the normal force. And therefore mu is going to equal to 100 divided by 250 which is 0 0.4 so the correct answer was E check if you got it right here's another multiple choice question a sled of mass M is being pulled by a force F that makes an angle theta with the horizontal the normal force applied by the ground on the sled is equal to. What is the normal force? So we see a force diagram of all the forces acting on it, on the box. And in order to find what the normal force, we basically find that from using the fact that the sum of the forces, all the forces in the y direction, have to add up to zero because there is no motion in the y direction. Now there are three forces in the y direction. Up we have the normal force as we see here, but and down we have the weight. But in, in addition to that, we have part of this applied force F. Part of this force 
is pulling up. The reason part of the force is because the force itself can be resolved into two components. Uh, X component and the Y component. If the force is F, then the X component will be acting on the object. And here's a picture of all the forces acting on the object. We have a normal force up, the weight down, and a force at an angle theta here. Now to find the normal force we have to calculate the fact that all the forces in the y direction add up to zero. Since there is no motion in the y direction, nothing is moving, there's no acceleration. Now, what forces are in the y direction? Turns out there are three forces. The normal force, the weight, and also one of the components of the applied force F that we have here. Uh, that applied force can be resolved into two components. A horizontal component and a vertical component. If this force is F and this angle is theta, then this is F sine theta and this is F cosine theta. That's because uh, the blue vector is opposite the angle. So what that means is now we can actually remove this and all the forces that are on here are these three in the y direction at least. So let's write it down. We have forces up, the normal force, forces down, mg, And up again, we also have F sine theta. Let's solve this equation for the normal force. That's what the problem asks us. What's the normal force? So the normal force here will be mg, bring in mg on the other side of the equation. All of these have to add up to zero, so I'll bring in mg on the other side of the equation. We have mg minus f sine theta. So we can see d here is the correct answer. Let's apply this uh, Newton's law also to a case of where we have somebody standing on a scale, a person who weighs 480 Newton stands on a scale in an elevator. What will be the scale reading when the elevator is decelerating down at one meter per second squared? In other words, going down and slowing down. So let's draw a, a, a force diagram of the person standing on a scale. It's right over here. There's two forces involved. Let's call up the positive direction, down the negative direction. So the sum of the forces are N minus W and those are have to equal MA. N minus the weight equals MA. Now if something is accelerating up, that's an upward vector. If something is accelerating down, that's a downward vector. But if somebody something is decelerating down, that will also be an upward vector or a positive vector. So those forces have to add up to MA positive. So the normal force minus the weight, which is 480, 
is equal to the mass. Now the mass of this person, if his weight is 480, W is equal to mg, M will equal to W divided by G. So M will equal 480. Let's use 10 here to make life simple for the time being. So the mass of this particular person will be 48 kilograms. So N minus the weight equals M, which is 48 times the downward, decelerating downward, which would be a positive acceleration of 1 upward, 1 meter per second squared. And so therefore we can see that the normal force is going to equal to 480 plus 48. Now, uh, this is the elevator reading of the elevator. What will be the scale reading when the elevator is decelerating down? The, the reading of the elevator will just be whatever the normal force is. Now, if, if the elevator is not accelerating or decelerating, the no normal force is equal to his weight. But if it's accelerating, the normal force will not equal his weight anymore, as you can see in this case it's equal to more than his weight 528 newtons let's take a look at this problem a block shown in figure 1 lies on a, on a plane tilted at 30 degrees to the horizontal the coefficient of a friction between the block and the plane is point to determine the acceleration of the block as it slides down the plane. We're going to do this problem, but first we're going to do it without acceleration, uh, without friction. So no friction initially. So here's the block. Let's draw a diagram of all the forces acting on it. There's basically just two forces acting on it, and we see here they are. There is the normal force, which is perpendicular or normal to the surface. And it is the weight down, which is to the center of the earth, as usual. Now, what we're going to do here, a couple of things. First of all, since the block is moving down along this direction, sliding down the plane, we're going to call that one of our axes. So that will be our x-axis. And of course our y-axis will be perpendicular to that. It will be over here. So that's why we have the y-axis here and the x-axis written along here. So what we need to do is to resolve the forces into its, their components. So normal forces are already along one of the axes. We're going to leave that alone. But this force here, the, the weight, can be opposite the angle theta. Uh, so it's going to equal to mg sine theta. I'm sorry, mg sine theta. The blue one is adjacent to the angle theta, so it's going to equal to mg cosine theta. So we see that these two vectors which are actually replacing this black vector, which is the weight. Uh, the one opposite here is mg sine theta, and the one on this side here is mg cosine theta. So, all the forces, there is no motion in the y direction, so all the forces in the y direction have to add up to zero. Let's look at that problem first. So all the forces in the y direction add up to zero. What forces are there in the y direction? Well, there's just the normal force up here and mg cosine theta down. That's it. And what does that tell you? Well, that the normal force, those two have to add up to zero since there's no motion, or the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. The normal force up here is equal to mg cosine theta down because there's no motion up and down 
along the x direction, all the, fo all the forces in the x direction add up to ma. Now, there's only one force in the x direction. M, here it is. mg sine theta. So that has to equal to ma. So what happens here now is that the masses cancel and therefore you can see that A which is the acceleration down the plane is equal to G sine of theta. So this summarizes it, A is equal to G sine of theta, and these are the forces. Let's put in friction, but let's do a simpler case first where there is friction, but there is no acceleration. In other words, the, the, the object slides down the plane, but with constant speed. So the acceleration is zero. This is similar to the, what you did in the lab, in which case the frictional force up the plane is going to equal to mu, the force of kinetic friction, times the normal force. So, uh, let's see if we can calculate the acceleration. First of all, let's look at the equations in the y direction. They're still the same. All the forces in the y direction add up to zero, since there's no motion up or down. Well, there's only two forces in the y direction. As you can see, there's the normal force up. And then this, this component of the weight down, mg cosine theta. So those two, n, have to add up to zero. Or n is equal to mg cosine theta. Well, we knew that before from the previous problem, but now we're going to have to actually use it when we do the second part. In the y direction, there's two forces. And since it's moving down with constant speed, they add up to zero. So mg sine theta, which is this force down, mg sine theta, minus uh, the frictional force back, have to equal zero, have to equal ma, and a is zero, so those both of those are equal to zero, the, the sum of those, or solvent for f, the frictional force is equal to mu times n. And it's also equal to mu mg cosine theta. Actually, mu mg sine theta uh, from this equation. F is equal to mu mg sine of theta. So finally, let's get to the uh, final case of an object accelerating down the plane with friction. The coefficient of friction is 0.2. And what is the object acceleration? So we're going to tackle it more or less the same way we did the other ones. First, we draw all the force diagrams. So here they are. We have the weight down, which is mg, and normal force up. The, the weight can be resolved to components, mg cosine theta, mg sine theta. That means we can take that away. These are now all the forces acting on the object. And once again, we're gonna, the way we're going to proceed, we're going to sum of all the forces in the y direction are going to add up to zero. And all the forces in the x direction are not adding up to zero, they're adding up to ma. So 
So the y directions give us the same equations we had before. that the normal force is, is just equal to mg cosine theta. Now the y direction is a little more complex. Some of the forces in the x direction equals ma. Uh, two forces in the x direction. Now don't forget, this force, the blue force, is now gone because we replaced it by the components, so that's gone. So there's these two forces in the y direction. There is down the plane, there's this force here. and up the plane is the frictional force. So this minus this has to equal to ma. So mg sine theta down the plane, that's the positive direction, minus the force of friction up the plane has to equal to ma. Now the normal force, uh, the force of friction is mu times the normal force That's the force of friction right here. And the normal force is given by that equation right here. So what that means is now that if we uh, put in for n mg cosine theta, and then put that in for f over here, we get mg minus mu mg cosine theta equals ma. You notice now that all the masses cancel off, all the m's cancel off, and therefore we have an equation for A, the acceleration down the plane. And if you put in all the numbers, g sine of 30, 10 sine of 30, minus mu 0.2, times g 10, times the cosine of 30, equals A, and if you solve that, you A is equal to 3.26 meters per second squared. So if we go back to the original problem that we had, the correct answer was here. Uh, so this is a little bit off because uh, this, this uses 9.8, we use 10, but it's pretty close to the answer that we had. Okay, let's finish this off by doing a couple of problems involving uh, pulleys, simple examples involving pulleys. Uh, let's look at this first example. We have two identical pulleys, no friction. What's the acceleration of the system? Now we have to remember the forces acting on are you know, mg, Now there is a force up here, tension up, but that's pulling this up, but there's also an equal and opposite force this way. And if you consider this whole thing one system, then these are internal forces. They can't, they're internal to the system, so we don't have to worry about them. If we consider both of these as one mass. So now uh, let's see if we can calculate the acceleration. Keep in mind that this hanging weight does all the accelerating. And you, this is the force that does the accelerating, mg. It's pulling things. What is it pulling? Well, it's pulling this, and it's also pulling that. So acceleration is going gonna to equal to the force divided by the mass. Acceleration is equal to the forces mg. This is this is the force that's doing all the accelerating mg. But what is that force pulling? Well, that force is pulling this mass and also this mass. So the total mass is pulling it's 2m. And therefore you can see the acceleration in this case will be g over 2 as the mass is canceled there. Let's try a little more complex problem. 
let's say the hanging mass here is m and this one here is 4m, what would be the acceleration of this system? Well, still keep in mind that this is the force, the weight of the hanging mass is the one that's doing all the pulling. So this is F. And what is it pulling? Well, it's pulling this mass and this mass. So A is equal to F over M. And F is mg, but m is 5m, because it's this mass plus this mass, 4m plus m is 5m. And so this is equal to g over 5. One of the things that's uh, asked here is, not asked here, I'm sorry, is what's the tension in the string between them? And in order to answer that question, what we need to do is concentrate on just one of those masses. So what we're going to do is going to just look at the upward mass, the 4m mass, and look at the forces acting on that mass in the direction of motion. There's only one force. And this is the tension in the string that's pulling it. And our mission is to find that f tension. How much is it? Well, again, using the, the sum of the forces in the x direction on that mass on top, on the 4m mass, equals ma. And the m is 4m, four times the mass of the other one. And acceleration we found to be that, g over 5. So and the force itself, this is the only force, t is the force that's pulling it. So t causes that acceleration, the pull of this string. There is no other force in the, in the x direction. So let's see what t is equal to. t is equal to 4 m times g over 5. Or 4 mg divided by 5. So if you were given these numbers, you would, the mass, you would just be able to calculate exactly what the g is. But right now it's just mg over 5. Let's look, let's look at this pulley problem. Two masses are connected by a pulley. One mass, M1, is 10 kilograms. The other one, M2, is 12 kilograms. And let's first of all show a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on each of these bodies. So very simple. Uh, on M2, we have this force pulling it down, and that's its own weight, equal to M2g. And of course, opposing that is the string up T. On the other side, we have M1G pulling it down. And the string pulling it up. Now, we know that because M2 is heavier, on this side, acceleration will be down. Be be accelerating down, this mass M2 will be going down lower, but on the other side, M1 will be going up. We know the accelerations of both of these are the same, just different directions. It's convenient to call the direction of acceleration the positive direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the forces acting on M2, first of all, and then we're going to at, look at all the forces acting on M1. So on M2, we have, in the positive direction, since down is positive, we're calling the direction of motion positive. We have M2G minus T, and that's equal to M2A. On the other side, for M1, 
since that's going up, any vector pointing up is positive, so T is up. M1G is down, so that's negative. And that's equal to M1A. So, in this particular example, we have two equations and two unknowns. The unknowns are A and T. So here they are. And they're also on the other side, A and T. So the way to handle this kind of problem is to solve for T in one of these equations. So for example, we can solve it right here. T is equal to M1A minus plus M1G. and plug it in for T on the left side. So on the left side we'll have M2G and what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in for T over here this. So this will be minus M1A plus M1G and that has to equal M2A. Just keep in mind that this quantity here is just T. So now we have one equation with one unknown. So let's solve for it. The unknown, of course, is A. So let's put everything that's got A on one side of the equation. Let's say the right side. So we have M2A and bring the M1A over to And on the left side, we got M2G minus M2A. M2G minus So we have this equation with one unknown, A. So uh, everything that's got A in it, we're going to put on one side of the equation. Uh, and everything that doesn't have A in it, we'll put it on the other side. So we have M2A plus M1A is equal to M2G minus M1G. Or factoring out the A's and the G's, you know, A times M1 plus M2 is equal to M2 minus M1 times G. And therefore the acceleration is equal to M2 minus M1 divided by M2 plus M1. Uh, this is 2 here. Plus M1. And so this is acceleration. It's just the difference between the two masses, which is 12 minus 10, 2, divided by the sum of the two masses, which is 12 plus 10, 32, times G. 
let's say g is 10. So it would be 20 divided by 32. Once you know that, you can go back to, say, this equation, any one of the other two equations, t, go back to this equation, let's say, and using that number for a, solve for t. t will equal to m1 a plus m1 g. I forget what t is, or what a is. It's this number right here on the bottom. 